Hello coders, I welcome you all. Let's continue our NLP playlist. In this video tutorial, we are going to discuss POS tagging, part of speech tagging, which is one of the important concepts of natural language processing. We will cover the what, why and how parts of POS tagging. At the end, we will take a real world example to demonstrate where POS tagging can be used. We will perform hands-on exercises using the Python Spacey library. Now let's start our discussion with what is POS tagging? What is part of speech tagging? POS tagging or part of speech tagging is like labeling words in a sentence with their grammatical roles such as nouns, verbs, adjectives, etc. Now why do we need to perform POS tagging? POS tagging is important because it helps computers understand the structure and meaning of text by labeling words with their grammatical roles. This understanding is essential for tasks like analyzing syntax, resolving ambiguity, extracting features for NLP models and developing language processing applications like grammar checkers and search engines. Before we dive into the technical details of POS tagging in NLP, Let's start with the basics by understanding the different parts of speech in the English language and their roles in sentences. So let's get started. Now first, noun. Nouns are the names we give to people, places, things or ideas. As you can see, first example for noun. The cat is soft. Here cat is a noun representing an animal. As you can see, second example for noun. My friend has a car. Here friend is a noun representing a person. Now let's move on. Verb. Verbs are action words that express what something or someone does. As you can see our first example for verb. She dances gracefully. Here dances is a verb expressing an action. As you can see our second example for verb. The sun sets in the evening. Here sets is a verb expressing a state of occurrence. Now let's move on. Adjective. Adjectives describe or modify nouns giving more information about them. As you can see our first example for adjective. The flower is red. Here red is an adjective describing the color of the flower. Now as you can see our second example for adjective. I bought a new shirt. Here new is an adjective describing the age of the shirt. Now let's move on. Adverb. Adverbs modify verbs, adjectives or other adverbs. Telling us more about how, when, where or to what extent something happens. As you can see our first example for adverb. He speaks loudly. Here loudly is an adverb. Modifying the verb speaks. As you can see our second example for adverb. She finished the race quickly. Here quickly is an adverb. Modifying the verb finished. Now next pronoun. Pronouns replace nouns to avoid repetition. As you can see our first example for pronoun. John is my brother. He is very tall. Here pronoun he replaces the noun John. As you can see our second example for pronoun. Someone left their umbrella here. In this example there is a pronoun replacing an unknown person. Now next preposition. Prepositions so the relationship between a noun or pronoun and other words in a sentence. As you can see our first example for preposition. The book is on the self. Here on is a preposition indicating the position of the book. Now let's take second example for preposition. She sat beside her friend. Here beside is a preposition indicating the location. Now let's move on. Conjunction. Conjunctions connect words phrases or clauses. Let's take our first example for conjunction. I like pizza and pasta. Here and is a conjunction connecting two food preferences. Let's take another example. He will come when you call him. Here when is a conjunction connecting the time of the call. Now let's move on. Determiner. Determiners introduce nouns and indicate the reference of the noun. Let's take our first example. Give me the pen. Here the is a determiner specifying which pen. Let's take our second example for determiner. Each student must complete an assignment. Here each is a determiner 
indicating every individual student now let's move on interjection interjections express emotion or sentiment often as an exclamation let's take our first example for interjection wow that's amazing here wow is an interjection expressing amazement let's take another example for interjection ouch that hurts here ouch is an interjection expressing pain this is all about the part of speech in english language as you know in english language understanding the part of speech of each word is crucial and this capability is extend to computers through natural language processing techniques so that's why in this video tutorial we are going to discuss pos tagging part of speech tagging part of speech tagging involves assigning a grammatical category to each word in a sentence clarifying its role and relationships within the sentence structure let me show you this practically let's jump to google colab as you can see currently we are using google colab so let's import spacey first now we need to load a pre trained model from spacey using spacey dot load en underscore core underscore web underscore sm and let's assign it to nlp so this line of code loads a pre trained english language model small size from spacey it assigns this model to the variable nlp this model is ready to perform various natural language processing tasks let's execute this cell let's take one example sentence the sun shines bright now let's process this sentence using spacey so for that we have to write nlp is one and our example sentence let's assign it to one variable doc let's execute this cell so as soon as the model is called on a text means on our example sentence it puts the text through a pre processing pipeline a pre processing pipeline is a series of steps means functions that the model performs to understand the text and prepare it for further processing here we are using variable doc doc is the convention for storing the objects written after pre processing now let's display pos text for each token so for that we have to use for loop so for token in doc let's first display only tokens i'm using f string and token dot and let's extract text from token let's execute this cell as you can see here tokens now let's display pos text for each token so for that we have to write token dot pos underscore attribute let's execute this cell now let's format this properly so for formatting let's write token with two tab spaces pos i am just decorating the output also here two tab spaces let's execute this cell now it's look better right so as you can see each token in the sentence is printed along with its corresponding pos tag that you can see over here so here the is tagged as a determiner det tag pos tag sun is tagged as a noun signs is tagged as a verb as you can see here bright is tagged as an adjective also full stop is tagged as punctuation mark so as you can see this output provides insight into the grammatical structure of the sentence that you can see over here now let's move on let's use another attribute tag underscore with pos underscore so let's use here only so for better formatting let's add two tab spaces let's write detailed pos and here let's use token dot tag underscore so we are using two attributes pos underscore and tag underscore on this example sentence let's execute this cell once again as you can see here token pos tag and detail pos tag so just we have added this with help of token underscore tag attribute now you are wondering what is the difference between pos underscore and tag underscore attribute now let's talk about this one pos underscore this attribute provides a simplified coarse grain pos tag for each token it represents broad categories of speech such as noun verb adjective adverb etc now this attribute tag underscore so this attribute provides a more detailed fine grain pos tag for each token it represents specific pos categories with additional information such as noun types singular plural verb forms like past tense present tense etc now let's analyze each row of the output so here first token the initially tag as a determiner with pos tag this one coarse grain pos with detailed pos means with fine grain pos it identified as dt determiner singular 
This indicates it specifies a singular noun. Let's take next token, sun. Tagged as a noun with POS. With detailed POS is NN, which represents a singular noun. Science. Labeled as a verb with POS. Detailed POS is VBZ. Indicating a verb in the third person singular present tense. Now bright. Marked as an adjective with POS. Detailed POS is JJ. Indicating it's a regular adjective and punctuation that you can see over here. So this way we can use POS underscore and tag underscore attributes. So here POS underscore is called as coarse grain POS and tag underscore is called as fine grain POS tag. Now let's move on. Now let's add more explanation. So again we are taking this example sentence and let's update here only. So again for formatting, let me write explanation. So for more explanation, we have to use spacey dot explain. And here we have to pass token dot tag underscore. Let's execute this cell. Let me add this line. Let's execute this cell once again. Now it's looked better. As you can see here, here we have added more explanation with detailed POS that you can see over here using this explain method of spacey and here we are passing tag underscore attribute so as you can see here we are printing tokens coarse grain pos using token dot pos underscore detailed pos also called as fine grain pos using token dot tag underscore and also we have added more explanation using this function of spacey explain that you can see over here as you can see here the in explanation determiner sun noun singular or mass science verb third person singular present bright adjective english dot punctuation mark sentence closer that you can see here so this way we can use pos tag detailed pos and also we can add more explanation like this now let's move on now let's take another example sentence so let's comment this and let me write one new example sentence the cat eats and at the mouse let's execute this cell this cell as well and this cell as well so i have taken this example sentence just to show you this one it's as you can see here verb third person singular present and here you can see it which is verb past tense so spacey correctly identifies the verb it's as being in the present tense and at as being in the past tense demonstrating its ability to understand and differentiate between verb forms based on the context of the sentence that you can see over here. So this understanding is one of the key strengths of SPACI and is essential for accurate natural language processing tasks that you can see over here. Now let's move on. Now let's find POS tag frequencies in the document. Please remember finding POS tag frequencies is important in many applications such as tag summarization, named entity recognition, information extraction, etc. So for this, we are going to use this example sentence. So now let's find POS tag frequencies for this particular sentence. So for that, we have to write doc, which is pointing here. And we have to use count by method. And here we have to write spacey dot attrs dot pos. Let's execute this cell. As you can see here, number. So here each number corresponds to a specific POS tag category. So let's convert these numbers to POS tag. So for that, let me use for loop. So for, and as you can see here, output is Python dictionary key value pair. So here key dot well in this. And also here we have to use items. Now let's print key and value. Let's execute this cell as you can see over here. Now let's convert these numbers to POS tag. So for that here again we have to use doc dot vocab and here we have to pass key. Let's execute this cell. Here it is showing object. So now let's extract text. Let's execute this cell once again. Now done as you can see over here. So as you can see here in this particular example sentence or in this particular document determiners appear twice, nouns appear twice, verbs appear twice, coordinating conjunctions appear once, punctuation marks appear once that you can see over here. So this way we can find number of occurrences of POS tags means frequencies of POS tag. As I said, 
this knowledge helps in many applications such as text summarization name entity recognition etc that you can see over here now let's move on so let me take one real world example to show you how we can use this knowledge for processing our text means for text cleaning suppose we want to clean our text by removing determiners punctuations from the text so again let's use the same example sentence and let me add one punctuation mark over here and we have decided to remove determiners and punctuation marks from the text to clean this particular text so let me add some cells over here and let's say pos text that we want to remove so pos to remove and as we have decided to remove determiners and punctuation marks let's execute this cell now let's use for loop so for token in doc if token dot pos underscore not in pos underscore to underscore remove then only print that particular token now let's join this tokens using this join function and let's assign it to one variable clean underscore text is equal to this statement let's execute this cell now let's check print clean text let's execute this cell as you can see here we have successfully removed determiners means the and this punctuation marks from this particular document that you can see over here so this is one of the ways we can clean the text using pos tagging that you can see over here now let's move on now let's visualize this sentence dependency using the display c tool from spacey let me show you this so again we are going to use this example sentence and to visualize we have to import from spacey let's import display c let's execute this cell and from display c we have to use render method and here in docs parameter of this render method we have to pass our document doc this one and also we have to set another parameter style to det dependency parsing let's execute this cell as you can see over here so here arrows indicating the syntactic dependencies between words that you can see over here also we can use options attribute to format this particular visualization so in options let's change distance to 100 let's execute this cell now it's look better so as per your requirement you can change this distance now let's try to understand this graph dependency graph as you can see here cat is the subject of the verb its it has a dependency relation of det determiner with the as you can see here its is the main verb in the sentence it has a dependency relation of nsbj this one nominal subject with cat as you can see here its as i said is the main verb in the sentence it has a dependency relation of cc here coordinating conjunction with and that you can see over here as you can see here its and it are connected as coordinated verbs they have a dependency relation of cong conjunction with each other as you can see here it is the main verb in the sentence it has a dependency relation of dobj as you can see here direct object with mouse as you can see here mouse is the direct object of the verb it it has a dependency relation of det determiner with the that you can see over here so as you can see here this way we can visualize sentence dependency using display c tool from spacey and you can observe here the visualization helps you understand the grammatical structure and relationships with the sentence that you can see over here so this is all about pos tagging hope you like this video please don't forget to subscribe this channel if you like this video smash that like button thank you very much for watching this video take care bye bye see you in the next video